Well, here we are getting into the newspapers for this morning. We'll be joined shortly by Executive Secretary for COPEC, Duncan Amwa. Let's get right into it uh, then. But just to give you a bit of an update um, with that story in terms of the banner headline on the front page of the Daily Graphic, Ukraine-Russia conflict, 24 Ghanaians arrived today, 460 evacuated. Yesterday, I was interacting with some students on the back of this, and uh, Julius, for example, who is the National Nukes president, felt that more had to be done in this respect. But in case you've not followed, uh, you know, kept your eye on the ball in terms of the Russo-Ukrainian crisis, Russia is saying that it is making inroads. But what is the reality? 70% of Ukrainians feel are optimistic they will overcome uh, Russia in this, uh, these hostilities that are being extended uh, to them. We also know, for example, that Russia has taken quite a hit. The Russian ruble has fallen massively. And in fact, as of today, the stock exchange in Russia has not opened yet on the back of uh, some of this. But Russia, on the other hand, has taken one more city. So many dynamics to look at in this geopolitical you know, uh, tension that is brewing. But on a more serious note, if you go back and look at the, the Cuban, uh, Cuban Missile Crisis, you would realize that there are certain things and certain hypocritical stances being adopted by some entities in the West. But on the other hand, we don't like what is happening uh, in Ukraine because it has bread and butter effects on all of us. As Duncan joins and we talk about fuel prices inching up, for example, you would notice that, yes, if things remain the way they are, we don't know for how long, it's going to affect petroleum prices across the world already. The last time we checked, $105 per barrel. It came down to $101. But what does this mean for all of us? And for those of you who are um, football watchers as uh, well, uh, the likes of Poland, the likes of Sweden have said they don't want to play against Russia at all. Uh, you know, FIFA, UEFA had actually uh, determined that they should play uh, on a neutral ground. Now, Poland, for example, has taken it up, calling on other European uh, countries to call for Russia to be taken out. So manifold effects when it comes to this war. Our hearts are with those in Ukraine. Well, this morning, uh, that story, the 24 Ghanaians, the first batch of evacuees from Ukraine, will arrive in the country today aboard Qatar Airways. They are expected to be followed by 220 others who have exited Ukraine and will be in the country within the week. The 24 Ghanaians are part of about 460 students who have managed to leave the beleaguered uh, Ukraine uh, to neighboring countries such as Poland, Hungary, Romania, Slovakia, and the Czech Republic. At a press conference in Accra yesterday, the Ministry, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs and Regional Integration, Ms. Shelley Ayoko Boche, said the 24 uh, had already arrived in the Romanian capital, Bucharest, and officers of the Ghana mission there had procured tickets for them to leave for Accra uh, today. And uh, the numbers, she added, were bound to increase in a few days as, quote, we observe the team spirit being displayed by our compatriots, reaching out to one another, setting up group WhatsApp chats, sharing important phone numbers of consular officers and other personalities who could be of assistance and the cascading effects of the initiatives. Uh, we're just hoping and praying that things go well for all of them and that they are all brought to safety. She also spoke about fake news and how uh, there had been talk about a train carrying some Ghanaians, you know, from Ukraine being hit by missiles. And, and that was uh, mentioned or said not to be true. We have to be very careful with some of the footage uh, we see from, supposedly from Ukraine. I saw one of the footage that um, I didn't, you know, I, I cannot share thoughts with you about because I cannot authenticate uh, individually or as a group whether or not it is true. Well, we're joined now by Duncan Amwa, Executive uh, Secretary of the Chamber of Petroleum Consumers. Duncan, good morning. If you can hear me, Duncan, uh, maybe you just have to morning. unmute. Good. Morning. Super, super, super. Uh, it's another Monday morning. Uh, thank you for joining the conversation. Let me start with you from the standpoint of Russia and what is happening there. And let's not, let's forget about wheat and sunflower and all of that. Let's focus on 
petroleum and petroleum-related products, uh, where now we find the, the barrel price of, of you know, uh, petroleum products or oil, and the fact that we've had our transport fares inching up. In fact, I have a list, and, and they have jumped up uh, you know, quite a lot, de depending on where you're moving uh, through the country. Accra Kumasi, 70 CDs. Uh, Accra Drobo, 110 CDs. Accra to Gorso, 75 CDs. Accra to Idra, 70 CDs. Accra to Yeji, 90 CDs. Accra to Nandom, 175 CDs. Uh, you know, Kumasi to Tamale, 90 CDs. V differences coming up. Uh, what is your, your, your reaction uh, to this? And I, I'll go back to this question. Do you foresee that there could be further increments on all the increments we've already had? Once again, and uh, I'm glad God gives us another week. Uh, in this day of nuclear um, powers, mm. uh, insisting that they invade uh, um, up countries and um, also issuing threats here and there, you do not know how long further the human race has got to continue with life. But, well, mm. we hope for the best. <laughs> so... Um, the follows from this Russian Ukraine uh, invasion, however, mm. uh, is a lot of economic challenges that this will throw to the rest of the world. Uh, Ghana not uh, exclusive or taking out of that list. Right. Uh, just Friday, uh, crude prices had soared to about 105. Right. Uh, it began easing a bit back to the 98, 96 region. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you do a quick check, uh, as of this morning, it's back to 103. Uh, it, it, it fell to 101 months. at a point, and then I guess it has inched up again. And so the challenge is now predictability and sustainability. Mm. Uh, like I rightfully indicated earlier, Europe would now be looking to buy for top dollar right. any cargo it gets across the Mediterranean. Mm. Uh, that means that for producers and exporters of oil, uh, the time to cash in couldn't have been any better than now. And they will be uh, waiting to maximize their returns as far as the tensions Ukraine, Russia is concerned. Mm. Um, for Ghana, I have rightly indicated, I think a week ago when uh, we had this conversation, that we are likely to see an upward increase of petroleum prices uh, somewhere tomorrow. Uh, this is not because the oil marketing companies will it or because of new taxes, but simply because your city has depreciated so badly, again, international market prices are also on the upward uh, um, trajectory. So uh, give or take, you are looking at anything between 8 CD 20, 8 CD uh, 50 within uh, the window that starts uh, effective tomorrow. Those are some of the fallouts from uh, the tensions you are seeing, prices would likely, likely uh, go way higher than they ordinarily would have uh, if these tensions were not uh, escalating by the day. Mm. And, and tied to that, let me ask you a quick one, uh, Duncan. Do you feel the sanctions uh, so far on Russia? Um, yes, some have said that it, they will take time to buy. But let's consider, Europe is considering, you know, isolating uh, Russia in terms of not allowing its flights into their airspace already. A lot of them have stopped dealing with Aeroflot uh, from Russia. There have been sanctions on Sergei Lavrov, uh, the, the foreign minister, and on Putin uh, himself. The likes of Chelsea's owner Abramovich uh, have suffered because of their alleged ties to uh, Vladimir Putin. The ruble has taken a tumble on the back of economic sanctions. Uh, the swift payment system uh, they are just standing by to enforce uh, cutting Russia off, though the Russians could go to the Chinese with a different uh, payment system. But looking at all these sanctions across the world, even as to, to as small ones as uh, Vladimir Putin being 
removed as honorary president of the International Judo Federation. All of these are in there. Are these sanctions from where you sit affecting anything at all? Um, not as far as the Russian uh, stance is concerned. Mm. It looks as though the more we throw in the sanctions, uh, the, hard, the more hardened uh, Putin gets. And if I was to have a take at the UN, I would rather advise that he be brought on closer to them mm. uh, as opposed to the threats of sanctions. Uh, in our tree parlance, we say the blind would not threaten to stone uh, till he has a foot on something. Right. Now, whatever he has his foot on, we do not know. Right. What is, however, very clear uh, here is that he is, <laughs> he is certain, right, to deploy nuclear if the world uh, decides to go against him the way we are. Uh, well, I, well, do I don't know, know, know about the economic, I, I don't know about deploying them when there are only economic sanctions. He has warned that if anyone interferes uh, militarily, then uh, th th there would be consequences beyond the imagination of, 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 of anybody uh, in, in, in that respect. So I, I, I don't know about, but he has threatened. But he has put uh, those in charge of uh, deploying nuclear warheads on, on high alert. And, and while international analysts say he will not deploy, uh, that is just another signal out there in international politics, isn't it? Duncan? Can you hear me, Duncan? Well, you see, the economics either bite share to behave in a certain way. Unfortunately, you have some of the, the larger economists abstaining. I'm yet to come across what sanctions China is asking or pushing on uh, these Russians. I'm yet to come across what uh, the Japanese are equally asking for. And so whilst you sanction and other countries decide to still trade or do business with them, uh, the impact will not be that much felt. But what I sense from the way Putin is going is that if in the end uh, interference could be in any form, if it is economic interference, people think that uh, the economy of Russia should be crushed and all of that, uh, then he would have no other option but to also wish to extend uh, across Europe. Well... And that would, of uh, course, uh, come those with... Those are bits that I think, I think the world need to watch. Mm. There are things the world would need to keep a close eye on because uh, you don't want to have a hegemon. Uh, you don't want to have a unipolar system where uh, whatever the American uh, government interest is as a, across the globe is what the world uh, would have to talk to. Probably, probably. Uh, I would be happy that um, you know, the UN brings Putin closer. The tensions do not give any returns to the world economy because, like I indicated, if you sanction him, uh, if you put him out uh, of the world economic order, you are simply asking him to make the, his economy work in other ways. Mm. Making the economy work in other ways, uh, I'm afraid, uh, he would now have to resort to probably either violence, extremism, or other ways of also raising income. I think that there's still a window, uh, like Zelensky has said, uh, he's probably ready now uh, to meet and dialogue. That should be the way to go. Leaders would need to sit and talk. Okay. Uh, if the intention is to go out there and simply threaten, 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 mm. uh, you can only threaten sometimes uh, to okay. a point. So, so you don't you... know what the other person would also want to do. Yeah. Even, 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 even as we move past uh, Russia, I mean, we are no longer in a unipolar world. China is, is, is making strides out there. And, and Russia itself is a regional power. Um, so they, they would defend their own. But as to whether they would be willing to extend this and breach even more international protocols, imagine them, for example, in, uh, you know, attacking any of the countries that is in NATO. I mean, <laughs> that then would be an action that they, they might not, uh, want to do because then NATO with all its uh, different uh, armaments and countries will be coming hard 
against Russia, even though it, it currently is the country with the largest stockpile of nuclear weapons. But let's, let's come home. Let's look at a few other stories. Demand rules of conduct from media owners. That's according to Prof. Kakari. He is calling on uh, you know, media organizations rules, uh, to have rules of conduct and engagement so that their journalists carry out their duties as professionals. There's also pay 5.7 million Ghana CDs to state. Shraj directs former PPA uh, boss. I remember um, Manasi Azuri Awene uh, on this one. And the Commission on Human Rights and Administrative Justice has directed a former Chief Executive Officer of the Public Procurement Authority, Ejenim Watinga J, to refund 5.7 million Ghana cities to the state. The amount is to be paid into the consolidated fund within six months and the receipt evidencing the payment produced before uh, the commission. It goes on and on. I know you followed this story, you remember it clearly, and the sums of money that all of a sudden appeared in uh, Mr. Watting's accounts. Uh, do you feel this is... is um, what we, we've been looking for, uh, the refund of, of the money into coffers. Some would tell you that uh, if, if the, he was complicit, then why isn't he facing stiffer punishment, a.k.a. May, maybe being uh, going through the court system and uh, facing the full rigors of the law in terms of uh, a, a prison penalty? What's your take, Duncan? Um, I do think that this is on corruption, clearly, and then abuse of office. Um, I shudder to think what the response of um, government would have been uh, if this was an appointee of a previous uh, re regime. Uh, I would be happy that the said individual, well, uh, Mr. Jane, uh, Uh, I also decide mm. to use the law. Um, we didn't, uh, if indeed uh, this matter were to drag uh, for the we we happen to be struggling a bit so for years on the scene. I'm certain that uh, the, uh, I don't know. I can't get you on this one. Uh, can you There's hear me? There's quite a bit that needs to be done. Uh, if indeed we want to prove to the, the Ghanaian taxpayer mm. that issues of corruption are issues we take as seriously, right. um, whatever refunds he needs to do to the state, I think that he should be magnanimous enough to concede okay. that, okay, uh, I didn't get it all right. Certain things really did happen that shouldn't have happened. Right. Uh, if there's an apology to issue... If there is probably even, you know, a court sentence and sometimes a fine, I think that we should be a demonstrable uh, uh, tenacity. A part of those in office now uh, right. to go after some of these appointees who clearly violated their offices for economic benefit or interest. If this is not done, and then tomorrow morning when a call has a problem of 500 citizens, then we use the law very hard on him. Right. Somebody goes to engage in something of a hundred, you know, Ghana cities, and then we say go in for five years. We only create a class system that empowers those who. Mm. I, I I get your point uh, clearly. Probably still more. Open mm. profits are probably. And, and punished severely by the law. I'm sure the laws exist in our statutes. How to deal with corruption and corruption-related offenses. Right. We'll be happy to see to the end of this because Manase took a great risk to his life and person mm. uh, to go all out to get this story out there. Uh, unfortunately, all that you have seen is a suspension well, of the said individual... Uh, I don't think we should institutionalize this so that tomorrow, if it is Duncan in there, he's also looking for how much to steal. And of course, when he is caught, the only uh, um, solution will be to, ask, to be asked to go home and enjoy whatever you stole. That should not be something that the state encourages. We should okay. see the stronger arm of the state coming on into this matter 
and ensuring that the right and proper things are done. Where okay. surcharges ought to be done, uh, we need to do them. We don't need to look at people from you. Okay, know, Duncan. Political uh, perspectives or lens. Mm. Those, those bits we need to stop, and I think that this is one of the clearest cases of abuse of office, of uh, a certain uh, power that probably uh, took things too seriously and amassed wealth for himself. What right. explained incomes? Uh, whatever that, that is, I think that he should be able to go to court and explain himself where possible. But the state should take a more entrenched um, interest in this to ensure okay. that he doesn't get away with our money. My, 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 my. My takeaway, uh, the state should take a more entrenched interest in uh, this matter. On page 18, accept divergent views, or say we sue the first deputy speaker to the Speaker of Parliament. And on the back page of the Daily Graphic, Etuga's brace Wednesday for Kotoko. Kotoko now perched, uh, uh, still perched at the top of the table with 40 points. And uh, on same matches played with Bechem United in second, so a 10-point gap. Let's quickly look at some other papers. The Ghanaian Times, Ghana plans to evacuate citizens, uh, that's according to the foreign minister. Former PPA boss banned 10 years from holding public office, directed by Shraj to refund $5.6 million to the state. Nungwa Manche charges EPA town and country planning to protect water bodies in uh, the greater Accra region. In other stories, three remanded over illicit trafficking in arms, that's on page three. And on the international front, Putin puts nuclear deterrent on Special alert. That was what I was talking about a while earlier. There's also on the back page of the pa paper, Oliface RTU today, Legon City's holds uh, or hold hearts. But <clears throat> Duncan, when it comes to our evacuation of our citizens, and uh, I'm sure you followed what the Foreign Affairs Minister has uh, been saying, from where you sit, uh, what, how happy are you with the approach uh, so far? And of course, uh, it doesn't look as though um, the attitude of um, non-interest is what is being exhibited by the Foreign Affairs Ministry. You right. see clear yeah. action uh, being taken. Uh, the only bit I'm yet to see is probably how closely we are collaborating uh, with the Russian uh, embassy here right. to ensure safer passage for our nationals. Mm. Uh, you get in other reports where, um, of course, you know, racism is still at play, even in times of war when uh, people are trying to flee uh, points of violence and uh, extremism. Right. You find a situation where people are still being discriminated against mm -hmm. on the basis of their color mm -hmm. uh, to wait while the white folks are probably evacuated earlier. Uh, and if you are lucky, another train comes, then you probably can get to move. Uh, those are bits that I do think we should protect strongly. Okay. If you don't do this now, mm. that subculture continues to exist and become pervasive uh, even in the coming days. Right. If we do not send a stronger indication that our nationals be treated as fairly as every other national, mm. right? Uh, any other person who needs assistance that uh, is also duly deserved according to the protocols of war and other conventions. Uh, right. I do think that we are doing something. We are doing a lot now uh, to get our nationals back uh, home to safety. But within the geopolitical uh, space, something more like a bit of, you know, a stronger hand right. uh, from the African government uh, ought to go out there to probably the security forces or whoever it is that is also ensuring people are able to move away from Ukraine and move to safety. That is probably the only bit remaining, but as far as I've monitored uh, people returning back to Ghana or finding safer spaces within Europe uh, to domicile currently, I do think that the Ghanaian government has so far done a very good job. Mm. The foreign ministry hasn't done badly at all with um, even a meeting that I'm told uh, is to be had this morning where families of those uh, students in Ukraine 
uh, probably all to be to ensure that they have the right information, right. Um, who to look out for, uh, whose telephone numbers are not working currently, uh, and then what about assistance that uh, our students in Ukraine and nationals within uh, the Russian-Ukraine uh, boundaries would need. So every parent, every guardian, uh, every relative of any of these uh, nationals within Ukraine, I do think that the conference center uh, should be a place it should be held in now okay. so that whatever assistance collective the state can provide, uh, the state would also be able to go right. and look out for right. uh, our citizens within the war around the um, Ukraine, okay. and, um, and, and we've seen we've seen a, a video that it supposedly is of students, uh, you know, uh, students of African extraction, uh, you know, who who were threat being threatened to be a shot. Again, I cannot confirm the authenticity of that because in all of this, there's been a lot of misinformation and disinformation. But uh, just to wrap, uh, Duncan, a few more headlines. Uh, court orders, orders NDC MP to pay 100,000 uh, CDs and damages, retract, apologize to MC in three weeks. And then there is also man allegedly kills mother over his missing 100 Ghana CDs. That's in Republic Press. Publisher newspaper, Adra Safu enjoying NDC support as she snubs a Kofuado. Chief of Staff, Oseiche Mensa, uh, Chief of Staff, Oseiche Mensa, and the NPP. Uh, alleging, according to the paper. And um, there is Economy Times, banks happy as the city falls, deepening uh, BOT watchdogs trained to save public purse. The publisher newspaper, Russia-Ukraine war 460 Ghanaians evacuated and Joais ignore intolerant bagmen. That's his way of firing back. The final newspaper I'll do, The Finder, Government paid $16.45 billion to IPPs and uh, fuel suppliers. That's according to Minister William Oriku Edu. I didn't say we need e-levy to evacuate Ghanaians in Ukraine. That's according to Afenyo Markin, uh, uh, Mr. Deputy Majority Leader. If you didn't, then I, I must just say you, you sounded pretty much like it. UTAG directs all lecturers to return to work. Uh, 460 Ghanaians evacuated from Ukraine and Navy gets four vessels to protect offshore resources. Well, Duncan, thank you so much for joining us. Maybe any last words for us in some 20, 30 seconds before we go? Well, I will take my last words with the Adjua Safo uh, debacle. Okay. It is one of the most interesting outcomes uh, you'll probably find in the parliamentary uh, space as we have Mm. Um, what I have been thinking, okay, should MPP go ahead and say, okay, we are declaring uh, that seat or we are sacking her, uh, would you be in a position to see the NDC now say, okay, if you don't want her, we want her, you know? And <laughs> so if there's a by-election, you would probably find the NDC say, okay, we don't want a candidate. Adjoy is our candidate. Mm. Uh, these are interesting times, but whatever needs to be done, uh, rightly should be done in Parliament. You right. cannot continue to have MPs absent for more than the 15, 20 days uh, and still maintain their seats. If there's no justifiable reason for their absence and they need to vacate their seats, I do think that in the interest of the people who put them there okay. uh, to represent their views or represent those constituencies, uh, well, Duncan, uh, thank you so much. The for... MPs must give way when it's but... Right, right. Uh, point made. And that's an interesting bit you threw in there about whether the NDC would embrace Adwa Safo uh, post her rejection, so to speak, by her own party, the MPP. But this is where we, we actually sew it up for uh, the news review. Up next, we have sports, and after that, the big stories uh, will come your way. Do stay with us.